Hey there, my name is Dr. Kevin Chase. I'm an entomologist with the Bartlett Tree Research Lab. Today, we are going to discuss and demonstrate how to construct a barrier for periodical cicadas. Before going any further, I first have to thank Eldon LeBron and Dr. Chris Riley for their help. Thanks a lot, guys. Before beginning your project, you'll need to get all of your items, and this is a shopping list that will help you do that. The first thing that you need is cicada netting. The ideal netting size is 3 quarter of an inch, which is small enough to prevent periodic cicada intrusion. Next, you will need PVC or conduit. We recommend using 10 foot pieces with female ends in order to attach pieces together. We also recommend conduit over PVC because it is more flexible and may help fit over the shape of your tree. You will need a four-sided cross piece of PVC that is the center support to connect the PVC or conduit to. There is a picture of this on the slide. A PVC cutter will help you make cuts needed to either add modified pieces to the female end or remove smaller pieces of conduit or PVC to also fit the shape of your tree. Rebar is needed to place in the ground and help hold the PVC or conduit to the ground. You'll also need a hammer for the rebar if you don't have one. Long zip ties are needed to tie the netting to the PVC or conduit, and landscape staples help hold the netting to the ground. And lastly, a pair of scissors or a sharp knife is needed to safely cut the netting to length. You will also have to decide if you're going to use conduit or PVC. Conduit is more flexible, and we recommend conduit for these projects. We also recommend getting material with female ends so material can be added or taken away as needed. An example of a piece of conduit with a female end is on your left, and an example of a PVC pipe with a male end is on your right hand side. The first step is to estimate the amount of framing you need. As we said earlier, for small trees, we recommend getting at least a pack of 10 conduit or PVC pieces. In this example, we are dealing with a roughly six foot tall Japanese maple. Here's out in the background starting to put together some conduit in order for us to measure how much we need. In this example, we determined that four pieces of 10 foot conduit would be sufficient in order to cover the tree without interfering with branches. We also constructed a hoop made of three pieces of 10 foot conduit in order to put around the cross. You'll see this again later. The next step is to determine the length of netting that you need to cut to go around the base of the tree. In the bottom right hand corner of the picture, you will see a yellow bar. That is the distance that you need to cut. The next step is to make a safe cut down the center of the netting at the appropriate length measured from the last slide. You can use either a knife or a pair of scissors. After making your cut, slide the center cut to the base of the tree. Make sure no netting is tangled with any low-lying branches. Then flatten out the netting. The next step is to insert landscape staples to hold the netting to the ground. First, insert staples around the base of the tree and down the center cut that was previously made. Then, place staples at the four corners of the netting beyond the drip line. Please note that you are not supposed to cut the netting roll during this step, as we will need that later. Now we are ready to install the rebars that will anchor the conduit or PVC. First, locate the highest point of the tree and stand on opposite sides of that point with your colleague. Insert the rebar directly through the netting, not on the outside of the netting at these diagonals. Install a second pair of rebar at roughly 90 degree angles from the first pair that was placed. We are now ready to install the cross framing over the tree. With your colleague, lift the conduit or PVC over the tree and insert each end over the rebar one by one. If one side of the conduit or PVC is too long, use a pair of PVC cutters to remove a section of length. Or if you need to add length to one side, cut the appropriate length from an extra piece of conduit or PVC. Now we will place the pre-made hoops over the framing. For this tree, we used three 10 foot sections of conduit. As in the step before, remove or add sections of conduit or PVC as needed. Use two overlapping zip ties to attach hoop to framing at the widest point of branch extension. We will now lift the netting over the frame. Remember, 
At no point during this process did we cut away the netting roll from the length that was made from the center cut. If you have two extra pieces of PVC or conduit, you can attach those pieces, insert them through the middle of the roll, and use it to help you lift the netting over the frame. Otherwise, just slowly unroll the netting over the frame. Once enough netting has been secured over the framing, cut the netting from the roll at this point. Now is the time to check if a second hoop is needed above or below the center hoop. If needed, install hoop under loose netting. Otherwise, insert landscape staples to secure loose netting to the ground and zip tie netting around all present hoops. Make sure no loose netting is on the outside of the framing as this could become a tripping hazard or get caught up in a lawnmower. It is likely that one pass of the netting will not completely cover the framing. Therefore, run a second pass of netting over the areas not covered. Use landscape staples to attach netting to the ground and zip tie netting to the framing and other netting to close off any gaps. At this point, also remove any tag ends from the zip ties for a clean and polished look. Before cleaning up the work area, double check that no gaps exist in the netting, that all framing is securely attached, all landscape staples are secured to the ground, and that no branches are tout against the netting. Make necessary adjustments as needed. I hope this video has been informative and gives you the confidence to build your own cicada netting structure. Not every tree needs cicada netting and should only be reserved for newly planted or high value small trees. If damage does occur on your tree, we recommend waiting until autumn to prune out the damaged plant material and placing the plant on a soil care and fertilization program to help encourage new growth. If you would like more information about periodical cicadas or any other tree related concern, please contact your local Bartlett certified arborist. We have also written a technical report on brood 10 periodical cicadas, which is displayed on this slide that can be found on the Bartlett.com resource library, or you can just search brood X periodical cicadas technical report in your favorite search engine. Thank you very much for your time and best of luck out there.